I could copy code for hours and feel like a genius, but I still need to understand what's going on when I look back at it a month from now, when I look back at it a week from now. How many of you guys could seriously look at your code? Hello, welcome back to Dummy Codes where I procrastinate my videos and I shoot them back to back because I'm stupid. I'm wearing the same clothes, so let's not question it. Let's just keep pushing. If you didn't see my last video, my last video was about, you know, being told by Facebook I am not good enough. That was interesting. It was a learning experience. And I wanna give you guys another learning experience. I wanna, I, I feel like a lot of people have been through what I'm about to talk about. So here's where you're probably at right now, right? You're probably at a position right now where you are just tutorial, 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 right? You're learning, you're loving it, whatever the case is. But here's where you're messing up, man. How many to-do lists you gotta make for you to move on to the next project? I know you tried to do a to-do list project. I know you did, I know you did. And then they said at the end of the tutorial, try to do this by yourself without looking at this code. And then you got stuck and you felt stupid and you gave up for the weekend or the week or the month or the six months. Let me tell you, you are not the only person I've done this. This is the reason why getting into coding was, took me so many years. It's because, well, for one, I had other stuff going on, but for two, I would get so excited learning how to code. Learning how to code is actually kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie, learning how to code is actually pretty interesting because you're getting so much information and it's great to see you type something and it just works right then and there. And if it doesn't, you're able to make a tweak and you fix it and you learn something from that. And I think that's an amazing thing to do. There's not a lot of things that you could do in this life where you get your results right then and there and you're able to fix your problems right then and there, you know? Now, with that being said, people are stuck in tutorial purgatory. Purg I sort of got if I didn't say that word right. Especially if you are a self-taught programmer, you are stuck in this position where you don't know what to do next, but you do. You know for a fact you gotta work on your own projects, man. You know it, or girl, I'm sorry. I knew for a fact I had to make my own project, but when you feel stupid and, and these tutorials got you copying and pasting code, just because you're following along with something that someone else is saying in their tutorial doesn't mean you know what's going on, right? Doesn't mean you understand what's going on. I could copy code for hours and feel like a genius, but I still need to understand what's going on when I look back at it a month from now, when I look back at it a week from now. How many of you guys could seriously look at your code and be like, yeah, I know what this is doing. And here's an example. Right now for my job, I'm learning Dart and I'm working with Flutter, right? I have to watch a lot of tutorials just to get how things are going now. Yes, I could literally just simply copy and paste code or get this, I could watch a tutorial. Yes, I could copy and paste the code, but also take a little bit longer time to truly understand what I'm trying to do. So that later down the line, if I'm trying to change something, and the tutorial doesn't have the answer for me, I'm not stuck and frozen up like, oh, I don't know what to do. Guess why? Because I'll understand my code. When you understand your code, you have so much power, you have so much flexibility to do what you wanna do, right? You're not dependent on, hey, I didn't see this in the tutorial, so how the hell do I fix it? You won't know how to fix a problem depending on a tutorial. If you don't understand your code, it is not working out. I don't know how many times I gotta tell you that. When I sound aggressive towards you guys, it's honestly because I'm frustrated at myself for the fact that I was in tutorial purgatory for so long. Now you're in this problem, right? How do you get out of tutorial purgatory? How do you get out of doing to-do lists on and off for months? Honestly, 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 you have to make projects and obviously you know that, obviously. But what projects you may ask, Larry, or may not, make projects that you are interested in. Like that, that's it. Make projects that interest you and that challenge you just enough that you're gonna stick to it, not give up. Obviously, don't make some type of machine learning whatever situation. Don't try to make the next YouTube or whatever. Just make something so simple. And if you still can't think about it, let me tell you the things that your simple project should have, right? Right now, you're probably only learning like front end stuff, right? So your simple project should have front end and back end. What does that mean? Front end and back end are the two things that a lot of people don't focus on. Well, I'm just gonna go off myself. I didn't know what backend was. I thought backend was some mysterious thing where you gotta sit in the dark and be like, I thought backend was where the real programming was happening and the front end was just, oh, that's, that's just fun stuff. But no, 
They're both equally important. I can't tell you what to use or what I use. Well, what I use, what I learned for front end is React.js, and what I learned for back end is Node.js and Express.js and Next.js. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> and Postgres. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> there's so many things. You had to find a way. Let me give you guys an example of Twitter. Twitter, I feel like for a lot of programmers or a lot of newcomers is a perfect example of what a pretty solid website does, right? Twitter, what do you do on Twitter? On Twitter, you write information, post that information, and then people see it, right? You read other people's tweets, right? You retrieve it. You see a whole line of other people's tweets, right? And if you regret that tweet that you sent, it was probably racist or homophobic, or whatever. Now you want to delete it. These key things. So you want to post, you want to be able to retrieve or slash read, and you want to be able to delete. And if Twitter ever let people undo their mistakes, you want to be able to edit. Those things, damn, are the core basics of what your website should be doing. Same thing for YouTube. YouTube, people post videos, edit videos. You can edit videos now and they delete videos when they start getting canceled. <laughs> Same thing for comments. You could post a comment on YouTube. You could delete a comment on YouTube. You could edit a comment on YouTube. You could read a list of comments off YouTube. There's just, okay, there's not that much. I literally just listed all of the possibilities. <laughs> Another important thing you need is to figure out how to do authentication. What is authentication? Authentication is just anytime you wanna log in with like email or password, right? Or maybe you wanna spice it up and do login with Facebook. Don't know why you would do that. Or you wanna spice it up some more and log into with Google. All those things are authentication. It's basically saying, hey, you don't have permission to look at this until you fill out this form. Aggressive, I know, but that is authentication. <laughs> As a rundown, please get this down. Have authentication, have a way to post information, have a way to retrieve information, have a way to delete information, have a way to add information. And that should be working with your front end and back end. Yes, you can make a Twitter where you delete and add stuff, but at the same time, you can only be front end, but you should know how to work with both front end and back end, right? Learn how to work with databases, learn how to, man, there's so much but really it's down to the core basics. Oh, and also this state management. What is state management? Um, the current state of my hairline is messed up. Let's manage it. That's a horrible example, please. <laughs> oh God, Jesus, who let me have an audience? Anyway, <laughs> so personally as an example of things I worked on, I'm interested in scripts. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in screenplays and movies. And I decided to make a little website where you could easily post a screenplay and edit it or delete it or anything like that. Just something very simple. And eventually I had so many of these simple websites and I was like, okay, I got the basics down, right? How do I make something that's more complicated? How do I make something that is more challenging, man? Just little things. Like you could always add little things. Like, like when you work on a project, you've learned something, you learn how to do it. Now add on to it, continue adding on and adding on, adding on, right? And it's as simple as that until you get to your big project. Cause eventually that I guarantee you, here's the thing. I guarantee you the projects that you're working on now, when you get better and you stay consistent months from now, you're gonna look at these projects and be like, this is a dusty project. But you also remember how much information, how much you learned from that one dusty project. Respect the dusty project, man. Just know not everything you work on has to be super amazing. You know, just know like sometimes you're gonna have those learning curve projects where you're just trying to figure something out and that's okay. A lot of people get stuck and frozen up about, oh, this project sucks, this project isn't. You're not gonna make the next Facebook. You could try, but it's not gonna work out. You're not gonna make the next YouTube. You could try, but it's not gonna work out. Actually, let me take that back. You could try to make these things and make close replications of these. So if you wanna make a video sharing site, try to make a video sharing website that does almost everything that YouTube does, right? Down to later down in life. So you keep adding on. First, you know how to add comments, right? And then later down in life, when you wanna figure out how algorithms work, make a better version of the YouTube algorithm. Whatever the case is, point is you keep adding on to your knowledge till you get to a certain point and you're like, mwah, mwah, I'm so good now. That's it, man. I hope this was useful to you. I really do because whew, there's so many of you stuck in purgatory right now. And I hope, I hope one of you guys sees this and just does that thing. Just do that thing, man. Just do it. 
just 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 get it done just make that project let's sit down and get to work man that's it anyways i appreciate y'all watching please subscribe please like please comment please turn on notifications man do what you gotta do to get it done dramatic yet again have a good day thank you bye all right video two done